Hello folks, Scott Grove here doing a review on yet another new guitar. Um, these are some of the coolest guitars ever made. Okay, these are uh, the Fender Performer. Okay, these were made in Japan only for one year, half of 85, half of 86. Okay, check out the wacky headstock. There's your wacky Fender logo from back then. I'll get it as good and close and as still as I can with my little hands. Fender Performer. Yeah, I got the shaky hand syndrome. I'm old. Here's your E5 serial numbers. This does not necessarily mean 85. Um, serial numbers with uh, Fender are very inconsistent and 90% wrong on the Fender website and 99% wrong when it comes to the Japanese instruments. Okay, um, this one is in a very cool mauve color, uh, which they did. It'll be easier than me to go back and start grabbing guitars off the wall. But you'll see if I just uh, yeah, focus in on, say, my Fender Tele HMT back here. I got one of those over there. I'm sure there's more of them laying around. Uh, let's look around while we're just hanging. <laughs> Um, let's check on the wall. There's one. Hey, there's another one in the same color as this. So if you can see the color, it's the same color as this guitar. Uh, very cool. It is uh, metallic. I know, check out my armpit as I put the thing back on here. Okay, so the Fender Performers made in 1985 and 1986. It was a split year, but it was for only one year. There are uh, people who say that this was basically constructed, if you look at the back side of a strat, um, it's basically shaped like this is cut out, you know, after you do all the contours and stuff. Okay, this guitar is um, in mint condition, as are all of mine. I've got three of them. I have another one here in sunburst. Okay, beautiful, beautiful axe, 100% mint condition. I'll just hang that back on the uh, ceiling, get it out of the way so I don't damage it. So again, pardon my reach and pardon my whatever. And the infamous color here, it's kind of a pearl white, very iridescent looking. Again, mint condition. These things, um, this one I paid $22.50 for it. Um, the one I have in my hand I paid, I think, like $1,300 or something for, but the uh, whammy had been tampered with, and somebody put in a screw-in whammy bar, a threaded whammy bar, which is a big no-no for these. This is a System 1 tremolo on these, and they are impossible to find in perfect condition. This one is as mint as they come, especially now. Somebody had did the threaded thing, but at least they kept it clean. Um, so that's why I got it for so cheap. The guy that I bought it from said, eh, just live with the threaded thing. It's like, no, I keep guitars original or I restore them. So another $300 down the road, I have it back to perfect again in the way it's supposed to be. Um, what's the big deal? Okay, the System 1 uh, whammy bars, thanks to Papa Tom, I was a little more educated on these. But anyway, of course they have the uh, pop-out um, whammy bars. Okay, so they look like this on the end. They are not threaded. Okay, and the other thing about all you System 1 owners, which also are on those tellies that I showed you back there and a lot of the contemporary strats and tellies, um, they have the little collet um, right here, which was the offender down underneath there. They had um, put a threading thing in so you could use a threaded whammy bar and not have to get the right one. But there are four little tiny holes um, since I can't get it close enough, there's the zoom. You can see the little hole here, another hole here. There's this little tiny tool. Yeah, I know you're laughing. But these are impossible to find. Papa Tom, if you look him up there on uh, Google him or on eBay, he has some of these. He bought all these back up when because he knows that the Fender System 1 equipped guitars and the Fender Japanese guitars in the mid-80s are the best made Fender guitars ever, period. Okay, they beat everything else. Period. Guarantee it. Anyway, so what happened here with the collet 
is if you don't have this tool, you are uh, kind of SOL on a lot of things. Number one, what it does is if it is, you put it in there, in the, any hole that you can find, turn it kind of sideways, and you can tighten it or loosen it. So without this tool, you have a couple things. Number one, if it's too tight, your whammy bar will not go in there. It is stuck. You can't get it in there. So you have to, yep, get your little tool back out. And I can un zoom that a little bit. Loosen that part enough. Then you can do it with your fingers to the point where you can take that whammy, push it in, and it snaps. Okay, it's in there. But now what's going on? Look at that. Do you want that? If you want that, that's cool. But if you don't, like me, then what you do is just grab your tool again, this tool, not your other tool, and just tighten it up again, as thus, as tight as you want. And hey, look, it's just sticking wherever I leave it. Okay, so until a couple days ago, until I got that tool when I had Papa Tom rebuild my collet in here and make it for the real uh, steel bar that goes in here, not the uh, $35 fake ones that are provided also on eBay, but for the real one, yep, 100 bucks for that guy. Expect to pay a good 25 to 40 bucks for one of these. The real ones, you gotta pay if you want the real deal. Okay, so there's the System 1 tremolo that's on these. Amazing, the most amazing tremolo ever built, actually. So, um, they're amazing, they're, they're just nuts. I can't speak highly enough of them. They're a great whammy if you are a whammy person. Okay, the rest of the guitar has the typical lock nut behind the regular nut, which leaves you to typically go out of tune from here to here, and it will happen. Um, the only nut that will not allow that to happen is a Floyd Rose type of nut. Okay, we eliminate this nut altogether. Okay, so your guitar will go out of tune from here to here. It gets stuck, it gets bound, and then you have to do things like put graphite in here, or what is called nut sauce. Do any of you actually want to be caught purchasing something called nut sauce? Not I, but it is uh, something you can make at home too or put some KY jelly in there. Or, hey, it's for more than sex these days. So put some KY in there or some graphite or whatever you want to do. Don't change the nut. Leave your guitar original. These are very expensive guitars now and extremely, extremely rare. Okay, whammies on the back. You do not want to put your strings in the typical holes here. There are holes down here to thread it kind of like um, a whole new ball game. If you put it in here, your whammy actually doesn't work. Okay, so do not put your strings in the regular strap type of holes in here. Bad move. Um, this control cavity cover here is strictly for the jack, which is a telly style. Of course, it's not the big type, but it's located in the same place. Okay, so what do we have on here? We have two humbuckers. They're slanted, and they are tappable. Not tappable. It's a whole different thing. They are splittable to single coils by this switch. Down, it is two humbuckers. Up, it is two single coils. Okay? Have a master volume. You have a TBX tone control, which from 0 to 5 operates as a regular tone control from 5 to 10, uh, boosts your lows and your highs, but not your mids. I will demonstrate that in a little bit. Then just a three-way switch for the two pickups. So what you have basically here is a strat from the back cut out to look cool. Okay. They said they saw just a piece where somebody had messed around in the back. I don't know how true these stories are. Um, somebody cut all the parts out on the back of a Strat into the front, and then it looked like this. It looked cool. They made it for a year, away it went, but now these are as highly collectible as any Fender guitar out there that is actually affordable. And by affordable, I mean expect to spend two grand on these guitars in perfect condition with all the case candy, the hang tags, the whole nine yards, the real, you know, original case, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So down to the rest of it. What else is great about this guitar? Everything. It's 24 frets. Okay? So you got your full two octaves. Nothing for anybody to bitch about there. Um, your two-point tremolo. Makes it nice and easy. Very easy to adjust in the back with your springs. Typical setup there. Okay, so that is pretty much it. They all came 
with the rosewood fingerboards. There was never a maple version of them. Okay, um, your tuners are sealed. They're marked Fender Japan on the back. Okay, now here's the great thing about this is that it's a great, great guitar. And I'll show you the drawbacks and the pros of it. Yeah, I talk a long time before I play anything. Pisses some people off, but the people who know me appreciate a guitar review being a review of the guitar. Not me just playing some slash licks or something. Okay, so um, this is like a Strat in the fact that it will give you all the quack in the world. If you're a real Fender player, you know what quack is. It's that two position or that four position. But we're missing the third pickup. Why? Because we have 24 frets instead of that and because the pickups are so huge. So you are missing this rhythm pickup, therefore you will not get that tone unless you flat out just roll some tone off your guitar and settle for what you can get out of it. Okay, now let's get to what it actually sounds like. It is in the middle, so both pickups in single coil through my Johnson Millennium JM150 amplifier, which is what I use for all of my reviews. And I'll get this down just a little more so you can see the guitar itself for whatever reason because you're just hearing it now but here it is just clean with reverb of course <laughs> okay so that puppy sounds great okay you're like, don't play country. Well, too bad. I play country. I'll play other stuff on here, but I am a country player. What is bad about having whammy bars and playing country? Um, everything. Okay? Which is why I don't actually ever, ever, ever use these on gigs, if it's a country gig. Um, reason being, if you bend one string, that's right, all the others go out of tune flat. And in country, I bend three or four strings at one time while leaving another note open. Okay, and case in point, low E string, then this. See, so I'm trying to make my low E string ring. Then it drops down when I try to make the bend. So it renders the guitar useless for country playing. Unless you just don't do those type of bends and you pick up a, another kind of guitar that has been blocked off which is a shame to do, or um, grab just a guitar that <laughs> is a telly or something, which is also a shame, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so there you go. You have the perfect Strat 2 position, but you have the floating whammy sound. You all know what that's about. So you bend one string. Look, I don't have to do anything. I'll just sit here and bend um, the B string and G string together, not play them, but hit the low E string. So that explains that it's just physics, it's the way it works. You got a floating tremolo, you are exempt from being able to do um, cool country things, but then again, you can do something like that, throw some distortion on it, and not even grab the whammy bar, and people wonder how the shit is he doing this? Because check this out, so you have <laughs> I use it all the time, but Barracuda from Heart, and you can grab the low E string after you do the harmonies, harmonics. And grab that string, grab the low E string or the A string or both, and tug on them, but not grab your whammy, but just for a different effect as far as looks. Okay, so. playing there anyway but um, you see what I mean um, so let's go to the bridge position in single coil mode very telly sounding if you want to go country 
which, duh, I just was, slap on the delay. <laughs> string but just doing that by bending up a couple strings so it's cool if you want to use it that way I'm just here to show you some fun stuff here single coil up in the middle position which is actually the neck position for this guitar so it sounds like a middle position strap single coil okay usually a middle single coil strap position is not uh, something most people would want to do, but these particular design pickups sound great because of the angle and because you're not doing the uh, narrow field uh, magnet thing. You're actually still being covered by a lot of space here. Even though it's switched to single coil, you're still getting the effect of both sets of magnets. So you're covering more than what a natural strat would. Plus, just check it out. It sounds so much different than a strat metal pickup. <laughs> Yes, and these actually stay in tune. I have it set to play in tune because it is a System 1 whammy. And for them to go out of tune takes a lot. Okay, it's one of the best whammies ever made. Um, okay, so let's show you the TBX tone control. Okay, that is, of course, your one and only tone control from zero. Let's turn it down to zero, up to five. Okay, there you go. Back down to zero. And back up to five, which is normally ten on most guitars. Now we're going to go from five up to ten. Okay, so here's five. scoops out the guitar for those funky sounds from the 70s. So it gives your EQ curve a big scoop. So you're adding lows and tons of extra ultra highs. You know, we're talking like 6K and up type of thing, which is normally not available on guitar. They would usually call it presence on your amplifier instead of just highs. Your highs are generally right around the uh, 2K range or something. You know. so these are very crispy. So if you want to go to like the neck pickup here and add all that crispy into it. It gets rid of some of the muddiness of it and makes it very musical. See, so it makes it bright but yet warm at the same time. Here it is back at five in that same position. TBX going back to ten. Okay, so very usable. Now let's check out the humbucker sounds. I'm going straight back to the middle. Now I'm going to flip the switch down here. We're going to humbucker. country because that's what I play. Okay. So there you are in full humbucker mode. Bridge pickup humbucker. Back to single coil there. Back to humbucker in the bridge. Middle, single coil, middle, humbucker, neck position, single coil, neck position, humbucker. Okay, so what do we want humbuckers for? Humbucker sounds. I'm going to the bridge humbucker and just going to add typical 
heavy distortion to it and um, just show you how thick it is. <laughs> typical rock guitar now here or humbucker shred city good whammy that works flawlessly everything on the guitar works flawlessly you have 24 frets you have a cool design you got a pointy headstock where everything is actually a straight string pole which doesn't matter unless you want to get rid of the locking nut which would be retarded but um, everything about this guitar makes perfect sense and it is a perfect um, guitar for so many people but if you're not aware of it, then you won't know what the hell it is. <laughs> okay, so let's go to middle position with distortion and all humbuckers. <laughs> reverse polarity thing. So they thought of that. There's your 24th fret. And going back to the neck with some buzz on single coil. Let's go to a humbucker in the middle with the uh, another amp sound. <laughs> in humbucker in the middle. Let's go to humbucker in the bridge with that same distortion type there. Uh, different amp modeling. <laughs> single coils so little chorus and you are in tune by God okay this has been one of my longest guitar reviews I hope you stuck out with me um, again this is the Fender Performer one of the coolest guitars around especially if you want to whammy away and do some of the best single coil sounding pickups 
ever made and the best sounding um, humbuckers fender ever made and why is this because it's from Japan USA never never made a guitar this good or this sound this good sounding or this good playing or anything Japan kicks USA's butt on making guitars period you know hey I'm American but I know who makes a better guitar and the uh, 85 86 87 era of Japan was the ultimate guitar time of all times and they still make better guitars in the USA and it's not fiction it is fact if you want USA fine buy it but you will get a lesser guitar but that is worth it to some people just to have the sticker that says made in USA instead of made in Japan so if you want a better guitar this is what to get okay so once again Scott Grove sharing a little uh, deep insight with you infuriating a few people but then again hopefully educating a few more of you out there again the system one tremolo is the one to get uh, for back in those days they had the one the two the threes but this one is by far the coolest ones and the rarest ones if you see Papa Tom he is on eBay or Google him he's the guy to go to when it comes to these type of guitars and to these whammy systems if you need any parts any little tools the whammy bars um, the guy does a beautiful job it costs more why number one because he actually has the real stuff he bought every piece there was out there left left over and he cares about what he does and he'll get your guitar back right okay so there you go my new 86 slash or I'm sorry uh, yeah however old this thing was <laughs> 85 86 yeah okay so it's built right in that era one of the two years but it was only made for one year six months okay so like June through <laughs> uh, May of the two years so there you go hope you enjoyed it and um, can't beat these guitars kiddies if you can afford one and you like these grab it um, there's nothing better there really isn't um, as far as this style of guitar so hope you enjoyed bye bye